So first of all, looking at the necessity of a stable base of support. In walking, as in standing, the muscle activity responding to impact from the ground probably develops from bottom to top to maintain an upright posture. Therefore, if the child has poor lower extremity or foot alignment or poor positioning or maybe inadequate or inappropriate positioning, as with the toe walking posture, then the muscle response and the muscle activity will also be inadequate, impaired or inappropriate. Therefore, a child needs to develop muscular responses from a stable, appropriately positioned base for appropriate movement coordination to progress proximally along the kinetic chain. That brings us to orthotics and when we're looking at the tibia position specifically in terms of the rest of the lower extremity. AFOs that are designed at zero degrees plantar flexion restrict the ability of the body to progress over the foot. They do this because forward tibial movement is impaired as in the ideal, which would be closed chain dorsiflexion. So ideally, the tibia is moving over the foot. And this is how the body progresses forward. When such dorsiflexion is restricted by using an AFO set at zero degrees of plantar flexion, body weight and momentum then have to create a pattern of equinus or toe walking gait to advance the body forward, as opposed to utilizing the ideal biomechanics of the tibia advancing over the foot. But the correct brace or the correct AFO with the correct characteristics can be an extremely effective gait training aid. And I do encourage you to look at orthotics for the toe walking population from this perspective, that it is to aid and facilitate as close to ideal gait for your particular child as possible, as opposed to being a device that prevents or stops or limits the toe walking.